Tailwinds quickly become the standard for modern web dev. There's a decent chance if you're rewriting your site or starting a new one, Tailwind's at least being considered. The speed at which it blew up is insane. It's kind of becoming the new way of dealing with CSS. I've even seen proposals that Tailwind should be built into the browser. But every once in a while, we get a reminder of why that's a bad idea. One of those just happened. As Adam, the creator of Tailwind, so kindly pointed out, if you're suddenly having custom text selection colors breaking in Chrome, like it happened for The Verge and Bloomberg to huge sites that are using Tailwind, you have to enable this feature flag to fix it because a new version of Chrome made some changes that broke this. This whole thing is fascinating. There's a great write-up here, and I'm super excited to break down all of this with you, why you should care, and how to prevent your websites from having problems like this. We'll get to all of that right after a quick word from today's sponsor. Post hog. Okay, I know, analytics are boring. I get it. I've done them so many times myself. Nobody enjoys this stuff. But Post Hog does actually make it fun, and they don't do it at some crazy high price. And even if they did, it's open source. Yes, like fully open source. You can go host it yourself if you really want. You won't want to, though, because their prices are really good and convenient, and they're, they get it. I can tell you guys how chill they are. You might not believe me, but hopefully... <laughs> Showing you this might convince you. They're an all-in-one suite of product tools, which means if you're building the type of product that you're like charging for and have users signing in for, they have a ton of the stuff that you need. Obviously, analytics is the big one, but they also have feature flags, experiments, surveys, so much more. It's just the, the amount of these things you'll find yourself needing is unbelievable, and having them all in one open source, well-priced toolkit is really great. I'm gonna be real for a sec, y'all. I never thought Post Hog was gonna sponsor me. I hit them up because they're the thing I use for my analytics, and I've been pumped working with them since. They've been one of my favorite brands, and I think you'll understand why if you give them a shot today. And considering how generous their free tier is, you don't have much to lose. Check them out today at soydev.link slash Post Hog. As I was saying, selection is broken in Chrome 131, due to the dash dash TW text opacity field, as well as friends, other similar things. I wanted to show you guys this bug so you can actually see it in action, but the sites that had it have all patched it and none of the Wayback Machine examples I went through still showed it, so it's hard to show. The TLDR is this behavior where you highlight text can be customized, and a lot of websites like The Verge customize it for different colors, or our friends over at Bloomberg they make it nice and fancy with the black background. I actually like the custom text highlight color. I think it's a really cool and nice touch, but I guess it can break. And it wasn't just breaking where it reverted back to the default. It broke where it just didn't show it at all. It was rendering transparent instead of the color that you had set. Adam jumped in here and gave really useful info. Quick fix for all the Tailwind users. As long as you aren't using any of the BG opacity or text opacity utilities, you can use this feature flag to remove the problematic variables from your generated CSS. If you disable color opacity utilities by default, the bug goes away. Why though? Let's keep digging in. This might be the best solution for the folks at The Verge because they are currently on Tailwind v3.3 and might want to do more extensive testing before upgrading to 3.4 because he patched it in 3.4 as quickly as he could. The alternative solution was to replace any use of classes like selection BGL400 with selection BGL400 over 100. Maybe you're starting to see where this bug came from. I see chat starting to catch on. This is what was happening on Twitter for a while. Yes, this has been happening in a handful of places. And the reason, if we go dig into the issue here, is if you have an opacity variable set for a background color with a text selection, it resolves it to transparent. If you explicitly set it to a number, you're good. But if you use a variable for that background color, it fundamentally breaks. Also, if you remove the colon colon selection, it still works. It's the combination of selection, which is a selector to get the text you selected. I know I'm overusing the word selection. Sorry, it's how the things are named. It's the combination of selection and a variable for your opacity that causes this to break. This is entirely a Chrome bug. So yeah, I kind of clickbaited you guys by saying this is a Tailwind thing because Tailwind isn't the cause here. They used everything according to web standards, but this Chrome version, when trying to optimize variable resolution, broke it for selection is my guess. <laughs> it's funny that The Verge did an article about how Chrome got fixed and they only care because it affected them. <laughs> it's great. And is it possible to see what you're highlighting again? Okay, to be clear, it was only broken if you customized it, but yeah. The latest version of Chrome has addressed an issue in the browser that broke the ability to highlight text on some websites over the weekend. This is also why I couldn't reproduce it because I'm not gonna revert to a weird like 
patch of a patch update on Chrome. Not easy to do. Text highlight working on our story from yesterday about the issue. Oh, they did a whole story on it. It's funny, the version, multiple stories about this because they're just trying to get Google to fix it. And it's easy to report on things if you're trying to get them changed, as I've certainly learned. We didn't break your copy and paste on purpose, but it might be a little broken on sites like The Verge, Bloomberg, and X. Not happening. It's still Twitter. Oh, shit. Embed has a repro video. Thank you, Embed. Here, Embed is selecting text and you can't see it. But if you go there and change that to a real number, suddenly you can see it again. Yeah, that's no good. That's a pretty killer bug. So according to Google, here's what's changed. The inheritance behavior of selection properties has historically been implemented through the originating element inheritance, where the selection uses the properties from a colon colon selection selector that matches the element being selected. Chrome version 130 and earlier used this model. 131 enabled a new behavior whereby elements inherit selection behaviors from their parent. Interesting, I don't see how that would break the variable. Tailwind has historically let you combine two classes that set the color of something and adjust the opacity of the color. So people have been able to do things like selection colon BG red 500, selection colon BG opacity 50, where the implementation of these classes would look like this. We have selection BG red 500 that uses the tailwind BG opacity variable that gets applied from a different element here. And since this is on selection, you would imagine that these, they're both targeting the same thing. So the selection element combined with the selection selector. I fucking hate the naming here so much. You have no idea. This combo should result in this variable being, avail being available here. But the difference in these here results in the variable as defined here not being accessible as done here. So now they pushed a change that has a fallback where by default, Tailwind BG opacity will be set to one and then it can be overridden by other things and fall back to one if we're not given anything. But this breaks composition in Chrome if the variables defined on colon colon selections pseudo elements are going to be ignored going forward. There is an alternative solution for our users who don't want to change the opacity, which is to use a single class, which is what they recommend anyways. BG red 500 over 50. I do love this syntax, the divide by number to control opacity. I was iffy at first because it massively bloats the potential number of classes. I fell in love with it. Okay, thank you, chat, for the correction. I should be referring to the colon colon selection as a pseudo class, but it's a pseudo class that is part of the selector, so everything sucks. Call it that there's one problem that will still exist because of the Chrome change, which is that selection backgrounds will still be invisible if someone writes something like this. So if you set a default BG opacity to zero and you set a selection to BG red 500 and also change the opacity to 50, I've done code like this before where you set a default value that makes something invisible and then change depending on certain other properties. That breaks. It seems like Chrome fixed it and the change already went out. So thankfully you won't have to do this. I'm not sure if they're going to revert here actually. I'm curious, we'll see. So they haven't reverted the change. So all of the weird behaviors that Adam described there are still the case. I am very curious if they end up reverting or not. I'll be sure to leave a comment if by the time this is published, this has been reverted. I hope they're able to because this was absolutely a bug on Chrome's part and it's obnoxious they had to deprecate certain patterns and behaviors and features because Chrome made a weird assumption about how it resolves things. Okay, Naman is here. Naman's the creator of StyleX, and also one of the few people that can, in my opinion, meaningfully hate on Tailwind and actually has real points. The heavy use of CSS variables is one of the most concerning things about Tailwind for me. Sadly, CSS variables are a bunch of weird performance pitfalls, which is probably why Google is trying so hard to optimize them. That checks out. CSS variables are a weird pile of hacks, and it isn't surprising that they have performance issues, and it isn't surprising they're trying to resolve them with optimizations like this. But it is surprising that they broke the web again and that Tailwind users were the ones who were hit the hardest. It's, a, it's just one of those weird scenarios where CSS doesn't provide us what we need. So Tailwind is trying its hardest to build what we actually need by hacking around Chrome shortcomings and the web's shortcomings using the few features we have to build better primitives. And then when they try to improve the primitives, Tailwind breaks because now there's assumptions built on top of it. This is why Smooshgate happened and why there have been all these weird failed attempts to improve browser standards. What's the XKCD? My favorite XKCDs ever. CPU no longer overheats when you hold down spacebar. This update broke my workflow. My control key is hard to reach, so I hold spacebar instead, and I configured Emacs to interpret a rapid temperature rise as control. That's horrifying. Look, my setup works for me. Just add an option to re-enable spacebar heating. <laughs> yeah. The classic. No good change goes without causing someone a problem. And it seems like that is kind of what happened here. The results being 
funny enough to cause The Verge to write multiple articles about it. But yeah, makes sense that we ended up here. What a fun and wild ride this one was. You gonna be more careful with how you highlight text or are you gonna move off a tailwind? Let me know. Until next time, be careful what Chrome version you're running.